Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association Quick Trip Wisconsin Counties Association Wisconsin Realtors Association and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139 Republican Representative Mary Felskowski of Irma is a candidate in the 12th district. The election is November 3. Mary, welcome back to Wisconsin Eye. Thanks, Steve. Glad to be here. You know, the governor and Democrats in the legislature say you, as a member of assembly leadership, should be in the Capitol voting on the governor's call special session on police reforms. You've had a chance to review the governor's nine bills. Mm -hmm. um, what police, what if any policing reforms could, could you support? So it's interesting and that's a great question. I've had a lot of time in the last couple of weeks that, to reach out and I talk to um, my sheriffs, my police officers. And I know, I know Governor Evers wants to do this package of police reform and I'm not saying that we don't need to do some, but I don't like to just rush in and do bills. I like the fact that Robin did the task force. I want to hear from the police chiefs. I want to hear from the sheriff's association. I want to hear from all the different parties that are going to be involved and affected by these reforms. And then I think these bills should go through a committee type process. Um, when we rush to do things, we very seldom get it right. So to bring these bills to the floor without a review on it, I'm not in favor of doing. So I like the idea of the task force. It's going to kind of um, replace the committee prop that we would normally do the process. And I want to hear from everybody before these are a final law or a final piece of legislation. Okay, I understand. Quick follow up. Do you want action on, on task force recommendations and anything that you can agree with the Senate on before uh, January 1, Mary? Um, I, I don't want to, I don't want to put a timeline on it. I want to get it right. Okay. So I like the idea that we're taking a slow walk on this and, and doing a deep dive in this because I think I don't want to be that person that says the police are the only ones that are at fault here and we need reform. I mean, as, as more and more comes to light, whether it's around the George Floyd case or the Jacob case, I mean, we put our police officers in the position to arrest criminals and like Mr. Mr. Blake had a, a warrant out for his arrest for some violent um, felonies and some violent actions. Um, I don't wanna draw judgment on what happened, but when are we gonna say to these people that are being arrested, if, if you comply, you don't get hurt. So I don't wanna put all the, um, blame or accusations that the police are doing things wrong. I think we have to say to the other side of the coin here, you know what, if you are being, you know, if you're in this situation where a police officer is telling you to comply, comply. Okay. Okay. A uh, new subject. Um, after the governor issued his statewide mask edict, didn't you put out a press release saying you wish the Senate or you wish the legislature would come into session and overturn it, why? Absolutely. Well, number one, it's an, it's, I feel that the order was unconstitutional. And when Governor Evers on July 7th did a press conference and said that he did not have the authority to do so under the law, and then went ahead and did it anyway, I struggle with anything where, you know, one branch, we have the judicial, we have the executive, and we have the legislative. We are checks and balances on each other. So if Governor Evers is acting against the Constitution or acting illegally, I think it is our right to stand up and not allow that to happen, as should the Supreme Court do to laws that we do that are maybe found unconstitutional. That's what you have three branches for. But in addition to that, I, I'm tired of Governor Evers' one-size-fits-all approach to the state of Wisconsin. We have infection rates that are higher in some areas of the state than others, and I don't like to treat everyone the same. In addition to that, Steve, I think it's a personal choice. I honor any business 
that says we want you to wear a mask to enter our business. They have the right to do that. But I have friends and colleagues that, you know, wearing a mask goes against what they believe in. But more than that, there's people out there that have health issues where wearing a mask is dangerous. And when you put a statewide mandate on that, these people then are being judged and judged harshly if they don't have a mask on. And there's some reasons for people not to wear them. So yes, I think we should have came in and overturned the mandate. You served on the Joint Finance Committee. We just got some good news on the fiscal 20 tax yeah. collections. They were up slightly. But uh, Mr. Nygren and Senator Darling said, we really don't know about tax collections in the current fiscal year. If they fall one, 1.5 billion short, uh, raise taxes or fees or cut spending, Mary? Cut spending. We've just seen a year where businesses have been hurt, employees have been hurt. Um, companies are in distress. This is not a time to start raising taxes on them. Um, the dispute over who should draw the next uh, congressional and legislative district lines. Uh, the Constitution says the party in power in the Capitol. The governor's proposed a People's Maps Commission. Your, your, your position, please. I think the Constitution has it right. You know, we in the legislature are elected. You know, the Assembly every two years, the Senate every four years. So the people have a voice on who will draw those maps. They elect the people to draw the maps. In addition to that, our state constitution says that it is the job of the legislature to draw the maps. And I think we need to honor the state constitution. The, um, the limits on uh, property taxes, uh, the spending caps, they've been around for, oh, let's say 12, 15 years. They, the idea is to control property taxes. Do you think spending limits, spending caps on local governments should be continued in, in the next budget? Steve, that's a great question, and there's numerous ways to answer that. And I think the whole taxing situation in the state of Wisconsin needs to come into play when we have that question. Yes, I think that property taxes need to stay capped because people can't afford their property taxes. We are one of the highest tax state in the nation. And even with us cutting taxes over the last 10 years, um, I would like to see a revision of how we tax in this state. I think Representative Mako had a great plan on you know, broadening our sales tax base. Um, we don't, we wouldn't even really have to increase our sales tax if we broaden the base, you know, put sales tax on more things. We exempt a lot of things that make no sense. Like we exempt clay pigeons from shooting ranges on sales tax. I think we could do a real deep dive into that and make our taxing policy make sense in the state. Um, he had come up with a way to fund our local communities through shared revenue with a percentage of that sales tax. And then that would grow as our sales tax base grew, as spending grew. Um, so it kind of took away that, that cap. It would grow with inflation for our local communities. So I would keep, for the time being, I would keep the, the spending caps in place, but I would really like to see us do a deep dive in how we tax in the state and make it make more sense. Just a quick follow up on that note. If we expanded the sales tax to now exempt products and services, should uh, local units of government get a chunk of money raised by that expansion? Yes. Okay. I think that Thank we you. could do, I think in Representative Mako's um, proposal, it was like 0.75 of 1%, and that would fund our shared revenue, so it would go to the local units of government, and then they would have an increasing sales tax base. As spending went up, um, their collection and their revenue would go up. Okay. Um, next subject. Last, last year, as you remember, Governor Evers called for an increase in the gas tax to stabilize our highway funding. Could you support any increase in the gas tax, Mary? Not at this time. I think that, you know, one of the things in the last two years, three years under Governor Walker, there was um, people put in to the management of Department of Transportation, the secretary and assistant secretary that we're making great strides in looking at how we spend our tax dollars and our transportation dollars. And they were finding a lot of waste. And I think there's still ways to be found. Um, I would like to see us continue down the road of um, just how is our money being spent? You know, we do things where we spend a million dollars a year on a project to keep the, you know, the, the, um, the studies on that project. And that project might not be on the boards for 20 years. So every year there's a million dollars being spent to keep it in the pipeline. 
I think there's a lot of things we can do to cut waste and fraud and abuse in those departments before we actually tax more. We've seen how the role of hospitals played in Wisconsin or playing nationally and uh, in Wisconsin, of course, of fighting COVID-19. Should hospital funding be an even greater priority in the next state budget that you'd vote on if you're a senator? <laughs> There's going to be so many priorities, Steve, but yes, you know, and our rural hospitals just came, I think they came in third in the nation. I just saw a report come out that's so our hospitals do an amazing job in the state. We have some of the best health care and our rural hospitals, all of our hospitals and health care is going to have to be a large priority in this next state budget. Okay. Um, U.S. Senators, uh, U.S. Senate Republicans say businesses that comply yeah. with COVID-19 protections for their customers and employers should be exempt from lawsuit, from COVID lawsuits. Um, would you like to see a state law that says the same thing? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, as, as COVID has progressed, I have watched employers do everything possible to make it safe for their employees to come to work. Um, you know, right from our local grocery store, they have the plastic shields up, they have masks on for the employees, they have hand sanitizers there. The restaurants, um, manufacturing, they're doing, the best job that they can. In our little insurance agency, I have five employees. We have everything there so that each employee feels safe at work and from hand sanitizer. So lawsuits should be about neglect. And if there's if there's neglect, that's one thing. But just if somebody gets sick, it's very hard to prove where, but we don't want employers to be afraid to have employees open and do business in this state. So yeah, I agree with it 100%. When school districts or local governments plan major public works projects, should they be required to give preference to Wisconsin businesses? The reason I ask is a, a study found out-of-state contractors got $72 million in contracts in 2015 for those projects, but that total doubled to $146 million in 2018. Should um, public works projects have to give a preference to Wisconsin businesses? So I... I would love to see our Wisconsin businesses get the majority of all projects, but I would like to know what's behind those numbers. Um, is it that our Wisconsin construction people were so busy that they couldn't take on additional work? So I, I, would, I would like to say yes, they should give a preference, but only if giving a preference makes sense. Are the costs the same for the, our you know, local units of government? If the costs are the same and the bids are equal, yes, they should. But if a local, construction person is going to charge, you know, 20 to 25% more should tax dollars. It's there. I'd have to know more behind that. Is it, did they have the capacity to do it? Does it make sense to do it? I think common sense has to play in there. I don't want to just pass a law that says you have to give it to a local con construction company. Okay. I want to ask a question that's unique to the 12th Senate district. Weedick recently issued a, a report saying the paper making the pulp industry is is at risk with the closing of the Wisconsin Rapids Mill and another mill, I think, in uh, Duluth or Superior. What are you hearing from the logging industry in the huge 12th Senate District? Thank you for that question. It is, the logging industry will survive because we have a great group of innovative people. So right now, Great Lakes Timber Producers, along with the Paper Council and others, are looking at forming a cooperative to actually buy up some of the business that would be consuming the raw product of lumber, consuming the raw product of paper and pulp. So 25% of the wood that is cut in Northern Wisconsin in the 12th Senate District actually went to the two versal mills that shut down. And so there's great efforts that are being made across the board to buy up the pulp mill, reactivate that because we do need the pulp mill. We're importing a pulp product right now. So it is at risk but you have a great group of innovative um, people that are working real hard to turn that around. And I think they're gonna be very successful. And I know Wiedek has been a, um, a real help in making that happen. Well, if you're elected to the Senate, will you have to introduce a bill to make that new cooperative that's being proposed happen? Is no, that gonna need a change in state law? No, when I met with the group that's doing it, I asked that question and actually Wisconsin has some of the most um, favorable cooperative laws in the, in the nation. So this is a prime place to make this happen. And this idea is not new. They're patterning after um, a group in Quebec, Canada that did the same thing when their mills kept opening and shutting and opening and shutting. 
So it was stability in the marketplace. It was a stability to sell their product and it's worked phenomenal. Okay, final question, Mary. Uh, uh, differences between you and your opponent on uh, November 3, please? You know, I would love to be able to answer that question. I have no idea. Um, I don't know my opponent and I really don't know much about him. Um, so I can only tell you where I'm at. Um, Northern Wisconsin is near and dear to my heart. And we've done a lot of things in the last 10 years to increase productivity in Northern Wisconsin, opportunity in Northern Wisconsin. We've invested in our hospitals. We've invested in our healthcare. We've invested in our small businesses. We've invested in our schools, everywhere from um, the rural task force that we started for school funding to our fabrication laboratories. And that is the things that I'm gonna to continue to work on in Wisconsin and for the 12th Senate District so that we have the same opportunities, no matter what your zip code is, for an education, for jobs, for quality of life. That's all I can really say because I don't, I don't have any knowledge of my opponent. Thank you. State Representative Mary Felskowski of Irma is a Republican candidate in the 12th Senate District. The election is November 3. Mary, thank you for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Sounds great. Thanks, Steve. Have a great week. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139.